The Cube at IBM Impact 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsor IBM. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Paul Gillen. Paul Gillen back at Impact 2014 in Las Vegas with theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship platform, and uh, we're exploring what's going on here at Impact 2014, where it's been all about cloud and mobile and data analytics, and with me is Steve Robinson, General Manager of IBM Cloud Platform Services. This has to be a busy show for you, because uh, Paul, cloud yeah, has they, been they, the, they, the centerpiece. They, they all seem busy these days, <laughs> but yeah, great kickoff this morning, great crowd turnout, it's just been, uh, it's been outstanding so far. Uh, cloud, yeah, and the cloud platform is kind of the star of the show, and, and, and let's talk about the new, sure. uh, the new announcement this morning, the, the IBM Cloud uh, Platform, the, uh, the Cloud Exchange, uh, cloud marketplace, I right. should say, and um, how uh, how strategic that is to to IBM developing its presence really as the as the foil to Amazon, if you will, in okay. the cloud market. Well, I think as we were looking at the marketplace, you know, we 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 had taken quite a bit of look at other app stores, and we wanted to see if we could take it a bit further than uh, just simply you know buying simple components uh, out there. You know, it's a it's an enterprise store all the way across the board. We structured it so that we have components. Uh, for the uh, infrastructure of the operations manager. We have our whole SaaS portfolio for the, the business leaders themselves. And then of course, right in the middle, we have uh, the, for the developer, we have our Bluemix platform and all the associated services around that as well. Uh, but more than just simply uh, buying the component, we're also adding to it uh, easier ways to discover, to be able to learn about the products themselves, demo capabilities, sample code, source code uh, as well. So we're kind of trying to use it as an entire knowledge store so the customers can better learn about IBM's cloud strategy and hopefully apply that to their uh, cloud strategy as well. Now, we were talking with Sandy Carter a little bit earlier today and she was talking about the uh, about the uh, the marketplace as really being a social uh, phenomenon. There's a whole social dimension to it. It's not just about what we think of marketplace is typically go and download an app. Right, right. It's about it's about building on other people's work and and combining different uh, different apps. Tell us how that works. Well, I think what you'll find is you know we it's a very broad reaching. So you know it'll go all the way from what uh, you would find as a you know virtual infrastructure and software all the way up to Cognos, which is a very rich. Uh, software as a service as well. But uh, around uh, the composable component piece, uh, especially around the Bluemix part itself, we've started bringing in both IBM content and third party content that really lets you construct and assemble some, some fairly sophisticated applications as well. Uh, the key with this one, we brought in some of the, uh, the market leading services, so you'll see your new Relic, you'll see your Redis Labs, you'll see your MongoDB, and uh, I think it'll be the first time that their communities can really see what IBM has to offer in this space as well. So in, if, I'm, if I want a licensed use of those, of those modules, uh, how does the licensing work on that? Yeah. In most cases with, uh, with IBM, of course, so with our components, you'll be able to download them and uh, you know, do a pay-as-you-go model. So uh, when we go full commercial uh, in the late June time frame, you'll be actually go in there and swipe the credit card, which is a little unique for IBM, but we're making the elephant dance to be able to do this uh, as well. Uh, with most of the third-party services we have in the marketplace, uh, we're allowing them free trial until, again, that late June time frame as well. Uh, but we'll be able to, to do a transaction with them, pass the license back from them, so it'll all be clean on both sides. But really, I mean, is making money the, the, the goal here at this point? You're, you're trying to build mind share. Right. And you're We're, to get it's activity. all about ecosystem, it's all about community, it's trying to bring the best parts there as well. I think the partners have been excited because it gives them exposure to a customer set they, they probably are not seeing from their independent site. Uh, on the flip side, I think it's going to give IBMers and enterprise developers on our side uh, kind of some new view into some, uh, some new very talented uh, software programmers as well that they may not have seen. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm kind of brokering communities at times, matchmaking between the two. You mentioned SaaS apps. Now IBM has some SaaS apps that you built and acquired and then are, you're working with third party SaaS apps as well? Uh, definitely. You know, we've, uh, IBM's been on a, an acquisitional I don't want to know if tear is the right word, but over the past seven years we've built out quite a substantial SaaS portfolio. You'll find Cognos, you'll see Sterling B2B, Conexa, Blueworks Live. Uh, we just picked up Silver Pop a few uh, weeks ago, Aspera that does the data movement for uh, Netflix. So very rich portfolio. Now these are full SaaSes, most of them, you can lay them into any size company and you're going to get value almost right out of the gate to them. You can do extensions to them, but you're primarily using them as they come. Uh, and then on the, uh, the services side, 
Uh, on the composable services side, we've been adding the components around the Bluemix architecture itself to allow you to kind of start to, to build out what you could do with other PaaS environments as well. How is the market responding to Bluemix? You've had it, uh, just a, a really a few weeks to, to begin to evangelize this. Right. How is the market responding? Yeah, we launched it at Pulse about eight weeks ago and it's just been unbelievable. We've already filled up our first data center. We're on to our second one right now. Uh, we're also speeding up the internationalization of that, so we're going to be following SoftLayer as they expand their pods out to have Bluemix with it uh, as well. Uh, based on Cloud Foundry, we, we predict today we're probably running the largest Cloud Foundry instance in the world uh, with as much folks we have on top of it, so it's been outstanding. We've seen uh, folks already rolling code into production only after a, a week or two, and in a lot of our major enterprise accounts, we already have pilots, hackathons, innovation uh, activities going on with them as well. Is it fair to look at Blue, Bluemix as being kind of a successor to WebSphere or a cloud version of WebSphere? Some people do. I think if you look back to see what WebSphere did for IBM, you know, it really became a, a backbone framework that all of our middleware uh, could then flow and then run on top of. That was a very critical time for IBM and it really gave a boost to our overall middleware portfolio. We kind of view the same thing with, with Bluemix, where we're really regarding it as almost a, a new platform, new channel for IBM, and it's you know, plethora of very advanced enterprise software as well. So you can see from Pulse to what we announced today, you know, we've, we've already rounded out over 40 services within IBM, and we have every single brand working actively to make sure that their components ride out on top of Bluemix. So are you saying essentially that all IBM apps will be Bluemix compatible, or will be available through the cloud? Well, maybe not apps, but we're using the, the technology and the capabilities to, we're doing a lot of work now to, to show the brands what makes a good service. So uh, our, our big data components, uh, we had those at the show this week uh, uh, for, for new pieces, Internet of Things, we, uh, we, we announced Node-RED so we could tie in some of our sensor and embedded uh, engineering work with it as well. You see our DevOps from the rational side uh, coming right in with IBM DevOps services. So right now, every single brand uh, has a, a team working on driving new content into Bluemix and we're going to continue to roll it out almost every month. So it's safe to say that any software I can buy from IBM on-premise at this point, the goal is to make that available through Bluemix? We'll at least offer gates to it. So, uh, you know, we announced uh, today a Cloud Connector and we also announced Cast Iron Live. So if I'm using DB2 or I'm using a transactional environment on the back end, we'll have services that allow you to bridge to that. But you know, our expertise is data, it's analytics, it's transactional environments, et cetera. We will have service versions of those on Bluemix as well. It may not be the identical type because you know, one's on-premise, system of record, but we want to take that expertise and expose that out through, through Bluemix so that we can build those system of engagements with it as well. And explain some of the benefits of using, uh, of using the, the software as a service when you have the choice between a comparable on-premise or, uh, or, or a cloud service, why would you choose to use the cloud service? I think what we're finding right now is it's, it's all about speed. You know, that uh, most firms today are dealing with their traditional IT infrastructure that they have, they have there and they have in-house. But for, for new pilot projects, to reach new communities, to reach new customer bases, how fast can I get it out there? When I run on the paths, I don't have to worry about anything around infrastructure as well. As soon as I hit add application in Bluemix, it's running now on top of SoftLayer. So all my energy can be spent now on the creativity of that application, you're reaching a new customer set with it, doing A-B testing that I couldn't do before, and I get almost immediate response back. And for the cloud marketplace, now who is the core uh, audience right now? Is it developers mainly? Is it, is it commercial software developers? Sure. We've set it up as kind of three major categories, and if you, if you go into the top level, it's ibm.com slash cloud, and then there'll be a marketplace tag there. So we've uh, broken it into the operations manager, so they'll be able to go in and see all of the soft layer components from bare metal servers to virtualized environments to uh, uh, virtual machine images, et cetera. Uh, you'll also see system management software, so the, the guy that's running the infrastructure, you'll see a full set of components for them as well. For the business user, we've, we've segmented that by kind of the key roles in the organization, so you'll see for the, the chief marketing officer, for the CFO, the financial officer, even the legal team, you'll start to see us catalog uh, the, the, the SaaS properties that helps them do their job as well. So if I'm doing uh, you know, executive commission planning on a legal team, uh, we have SaaS properties for that as well. If I'm doing <coughs> B2B with Sterling, there's, there's SaaS properties for that. And then the middle tier is for the developer. So the developer, we have the blue mix there, front and center. We have the, all the IBM pieces that cover data, that cover mobile, cover communication, cover infrastructure, uh, and we have the third parties in there also. 
The, uh, in terms of mixing and matching services from, from multiple uh, providers, what guidance are you giving your partners to make to expose their services sure. on a piecemeal basis so that I can I can combine a, a payment service from one company with a right. uh, with an order fulfillment. Yeah, we're doing up. a lot of education with them as well, and I think a lot of them are just getting pressure from the marketplace at the same time. What makes a good service? Uh, how do I start to uh, break my larger uh, application up into something that's composable? So uh, we're helping them understand uh, how to quickly get on board. Many of them will just take their take their SaaS application and host it on SoftLayer. Uh, then work with us a little bit to start doing, uh, opening up some APIs to that and we can wrapper those APIs. And then I think the, the further step is actually starting to do some composable assets as well, where it, it's there, it's tightly bound with Bluemix, uh, and I can start uh, using it as a jigsaw puzzle piece with other pieces to start to build out brand new applications. For companies, uh, I'm speaking of your, your customers, who were, were building using uh, service-oriented architecture of course, you know, yeah. years ago, oh, yeah. is there a migration path for them to apply that to the cloud? Yeah, and I started back in the object-oriented days, so you know we had, uh, we had OO, we had SOA. You know, these concepts have been out there for quite some time. Uh, I think the, the general concepts uh, are good. Uh, those that had done a lot of work around service-oriented architecture, the notion of service brokering, the ability of extending and binding those connectors, they all have kind of AB equivalents uh, in, the, in kind of the new open cloud world. And I see a lot of these players have also been some of the early ones that have started providing you know, the, the databases, the analytic packages, the Hadoop platforms, et cetera. So I think if a customer had been going down an SOA path, a lot of that architecture and approach is very transferable into this domain. How, how ultimately, I, give us, your, your, your website says uh, 200 days of Blue Mix. Yeah, you, okay. you have a, uh, is there a time frame that we should look for, uh, you know, six months from now, 12 months from now, and, and metrics that we should apply to decide, well, has Bluemix really been, been successful? Well, it's, uh, we, we look at it daily, I'll tell you, I'll tell you that. It's a very hyper-competitive market right now. We're, we're watching all our friends out there with regards to what they do. You know, part of what we're doing right now is community building. And uh, you know, can we build up you know, tens of thousands of individuals running on Bluemix, also getting footprints into our major accounts, also getting the major service providers up and going on the platform itself, and we feel like we're being very successful on that as well. I think it's always the race to, can you get a, a, a major community built around you? Uh, and you know, within a year or so, I, I think we'll have a, a very substantial community built up around Bluemix that we can you know, easily stand up across everyone else. Uh, some of the other platforms have had a year or two to be out there, but we're kind of tracking our progression compared to theirs, and we're extremely pleased with the, uh, with the uh, kind of the acceleration that we're seeing. And how does this play to IBM's uh, uh, positioning of the hybrid cloud? Uh, IBM clearly, your, your, your uh, comeback against Amazon has been that hybrid clouds yeah. really are where the, where the action is. How does this play to that uh, message? Yeah, we're kind of using the term today at the show on dynamic cloud. And I think that's what firms are dealing with. You know, most firms are, are trying to deal with three basic architectures. Their traditional IT, uh, their private cloud, and how they're virtualizing that, uh, that, that uh, enterprise IT organization, and then the public cloud itself. Uh, in most cases, our customers have spent years and decades on highly valuable assets that they have in that traditional IT infrastructure. It's where my databases are, it's where my, my records of business are, it's where you know, all of my, how I do my business, the processes are. And then how can I extend those safely out to the public cloud? And I think this is one of the areas that IBM will be able to do the best. How do I bridge? How do I do it safely? How do I handle the data protection with it? How do I really let me further amplify those assets out? It's nobody better. We've been in the enterprise, enterprise software space longer than all these guys co combined, and if we can't get that one right, just take us out back. we we, we got to hit that one good. <laughs> For uh, WebSphere users in particular, what's the migration path look like? Uh, we've done some great stuff. You know, one of the most popular services we have within Bluemix is our Liberty Build Pack, and it's a, it's a Java-based build pack that connects directly into WebSphere. Most of them are picking that up, and uh, they're not even skipping a beat. They're actually taking existing applications and working directly with it. We also announced Cloud Connection, both uh, Cast Iron Live and Cloud Connector and this gives them you know, direct access to their legacy environments. We have pre-built patterns for that as well. And also we have a, another uh, application stack that uh, uh, is kind of below Bluemix. Uh, we call it our pure application stack. 
and you can almost take existing WebSphere applications and infrastructure, host it directly on uh, software itself, almost zero modification, and that's a great way to start playing around with the public cloud with almost no modification to your code at all. You, you mentioned Pure, and it reminds me of Pure Systems, which is was sort of built for the cloud. That's right. Is there any particular advantage to Pure Systems customers, uh, to, to, to uh, companies adopting Pure Systems because of that bridge to, to Bluemix? Well, I think, you know, we, we kind of view it, where are they starting from today? So if they've been long-term users of IBM middleware, they've got existing structures up, they've already got those pieces very well integrated. Pure's a fantastic way to take advantage of a virtualized infrastructure, et cetera. We talked to a few partners today that were doing a little bit of debate between Pure and Bluemix, and if they were starting fresh, you know, kind of becoming a fresh, born on the web type of thing, they're just going to Bluemix right away. And we'll start to build more bridges so that the patterns are a little bit more portable between the two, et cetera, so uh, we'll, we'll offer several paths for them to get there. And the. Uh, in terms of the, the marketplace, uh, what will the, the, the payment structure be like? How will that, how will that evolve over time? Presumably sure. right now everything is, it, the cost of entry is very low. Very low, and uh, we'll announce commercial terms probably in the, the late June time frame. It'll look similar to a, what a, a lot of the, uh, the marketplaces have, you know, be a percentage here and a percentage there as well. For Bluemix itself, what we're looking for is kind of a, a couple steps. First, uh, using the environment, I'll uh, be able to swipe the credit card and do pay as you go. We'll kind of let you build up a bill of material around the application that you have. Uh, we'll also offer subscription-based services, so for just like your cell phone bill, for a fixed cost, X amount a month, you'll be able to use this much capacity as well. Uh, and then, of course, we'll also offer for those firms that fully standardize on it, ability to wrapper that into their enterprise license and to their, their, their big traditional uh, contracts with IBM. Are there any special programs for business partners to develop, uh, to, to move their development operations to, to the cloud? We're doing th three things, and uh, I think what we're looking for are those that are already on software. You know, that's a very prime target space that we're looking for. And you'll see a lot of the, you know, some of the most popular services out there are already on software, so you'll see cloud already out there, you'll see Redis Lab already on software, you'll see SynGrid. So those are very ad, easy ads to the marketplace itself. Uh, many of them we're working with right now is how do we quickly get connected with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Bluemix. So you'll see folks like Zend who uh, have had virtual images that are now going to be working on making uh, Bluemix components out of that as well. And then the final group that we're working on are those that have been working with our large SaaS portfolio, such as our Cognos, our Sterling, et cetera, and they're part of that ecosystem. So that's another group that we want to pull into the marketplace as well. And IBM has been on a major campaign to convince its, its business partners to move to an MSP, a managed service provider model. Right. Is this part of that mix? I would view that kind of a, a little bit below. You know, we do have a very vibrant uh, MSP program within IBM, which is more of a combination of services with software. We use it uh, quite a bit, say, with our security. Uh, we run a, you know, security operations centers for many, many accounts, and we have a lot of partner software in there that we, we run on a seven by 24 uh, basis as well. But the marketplace itself, we're looking for more freestanding software, so this would be something that they could use uh, to utilize. Now, whether they use IBM services or their own, their choice. Steve, we'll give you the last word on this. For those who are doubting that IBM is all in on the cloud, <laughs> what uh, what do these announcements say to them? Well, I think what you're seeing is kind of the third step in a, in a, a very serious progression. It was only about nine months ago when we picked up SoftLayer, and uh, you know that gave us a, a rock solid, tremendous infrastructure. Uh, we followed that quickly with about another billion dollar spend uh, around the around the, the Bluemix launch and the, the services associated with that. We just announced another expansion of software to 40 data centers, and then you see today kind of the more the, the marketplace being launched, which really builds out our ecosystem, uh, and then the additional services on Bluemix. We are all in, the chairman's fully behind us, uh, and you see the momentum is unlike anything I've ever seen in my career at IBM. And certainly uh, software emerging as the jewel in the that's crown that's for that's IBM's that's cloud good. strategy. Steve Robinson, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, as you can see, this the cloud is the theme here at Impact 2014. Some big announcements and, and uh, IBM making it very clear that this is, is something that the whole company is behind. We'll be right back after a short break with our next guest.